cool. Now we can play with it all. Thank you. Cool. I have to make a test of your voice just to see how loud. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. 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 Okay. Just woke up to find out my name is Buckle. Yeah, Buckle. Buckle. Seems to be missing. Maybe they didn't have letters enough for yeah. you, for the for the rest of you. Yeah, the machine can only do. Uh, the machine can only do. Uh, what? One, two, three, four, five, six. So Robert Plant's really pissed. <laughs> Page in. Yeah, there was no place for him. But talking about that concert, you you gave in Copenhagen mm -hmm. ten months ago, so. I think ten months ago. I it must be ten months ago. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much true. <laughs> I, th I think there was a constant. One one thing I noticed is that the, the f although you say you don't have a prefix set list, oh. there was a constant flow uh, between the songs. It seems like it's very important for you to have a a pace and a and a flow in the set. Also on the on the LP, the the way the songs uh, are, are connected. Yes. Yeah, um, which is precisely why we don't have a set list because um, you can you can plan to have a flow in in the abstract, you know, in your mind, looking at a piece of paper, seeing what songs you're going to do. That can have a flow, but as soon as you get into a room, then the the energy may not match the set list. So the best thing you can do is is read the energy of the audience, have your band know the songs well enough and know each other well enough that. You know, you know each other's tendencies and habits, and what sort of feels right. And the point is to, is that, is that the 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 song, the song that you're playing, uh, sort of, I don't know, the rhythm of it uh, dictates the next one. It's like DJing the whole night. But the tendency to, to to work this way has this come from from playing on the street like like a busker for some years? Has it, has it something got to do with that? Uh, it ha it has to do with with that kind of work I, I did. Yeah, I mean it has to, that that's what I wanted to learn when I was doing solo shows. Was how to do that? Was how to read the energy of an of an audience? Uh, and to and to have the the night to rise or fall or expand or contract. According to it, it's, it's a pretty arbitrary thing, but... but... But do you still pick up a guitar and go and play in the streets, or...? Uh, I play whenever I can. And now, nowadays, I don't have that much time at all. It's usually just touring. But yeah, I will, again. Is it something that you, that you miss? Yes. It's also a... There's a certain strength that you need to do that, as opposed to a whole other quality of strength uh, doing these shows. Not strength, but just, you know, you need to be in a whole different head. And I remember playing a solo show at the top of the year. It was, uh, what was it? It was at Chennai, and it was New Year's Eve, and uh, I was rusty as hell. I was really struggling. You were struggling? Yes. How come? Because uh, I'd been away from that way of performing for so long. It took me a while to get it together. I just I didn't have the same flow as I as I used to, and I just have to get it back again. But hasn't that got something to do with the the, the, the uh, all these things that had, has happened to you in the, during the last year? I mean, when what you were mean, playing as a solo artist. Exhaustion, you mean? No, I think one year ago, because before you released the LP and you were playing solo concerts, nobody knew who you were, and now you are on a lot of people's lips, and they have expectations for you now. Mm -hmm. Things have changed. Oh, that's 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 true. At at that show in particular, there were a lot of uh, a lot of people expecting a rock show and yelling my name instead of listening. It was also New Year's Eve, but still, I'd like to I'd like to bust all this down, totally destroy it, and then rebuild it again. Because it was it was better when people just came there because they needed to come instead of you know yeah coming to see some sort of mild spectacle. Which it isn't. It's really, I ne it's never a spectacle. It's just I, I have a, a lot of stories to tell, and if you want to hear them, you can sit down. And it's really simple. It's really simple. It shouldn't become too overinflated. But you told me just before we started the inter interview that uh, the concert in Copenhagen. One thing you didn't like was uh, 
the few people who were there, some of them that were older and they came because of uh, your father's reputation. Is that a problem you, all, you often have when you're performing? No, no not really. It's sort of... Uh, it's not really all that bad. It's just annoying. Uh, it's annoying to see it and it's annoying to, um, to hear about it from those certain people. They really are... It's, you know, it's quite an innocent thing. I, I don't hate them. But it's just annoying, you know, people hanging on to the past, people... Uh, and I'm especially sensitive to it because... But, but is it like you can feel the expectations from them towards your, you as a person? Well, that's sort of like... being... It's sort of like being a... A, a black man from Africa and coming to another country and people expecting you to break into some sort of tribal dance at any moment or eat a dog or and it's, none of it's true and as that person you can't you, you can be totally annoyed but you have to have some some personal resolve and, and, a, and a balance to deal with it or else you know or else you'll just be constantly annoyed and, and that'll I, I don't want that creeping into my voice or into my actions so I just, I deflect it somehow. But actually you are able to attract a, a very young audience who don't know anything about your father. Uh, at the Danish radio, mm. we have a youth program for p kids between uh, thir 13 and 20 years oh. old. And um, they, they do have their own hit list. And uh, the last goodbye is at the top of the hit list, actually. That's true. And, and a lot of these young kids, they are sending, um, you know, for, to the program, they are sending their own farewell letters just to show how much they love the melody. And it's not a lie. Then you must tell them that I love them too. Because uh, that's amazing. Farewell letters. It's, <laughs> it's a pretty universal uh, sentiment in that song. Do you often get that sort of response from, from, from the, the audience you attract? Those what? That, that sort of uh, respon response from response? the yeah. I thought you said wishbones. Yeah, no. that's, that's almost cooler. but um. Response. Yeah, I, I've gotten uh, letters uh, about people just having bro broken up and then getting the album, uh, and sometimes not even uh, the, the, it strikes people n not even about love affairs or love relationships. One girl had a gr had a friend in the hospital sick with cancer, and uh, and that's what n that's the person that they were reminded of when they heard the song they, they could die and it is that too it's it, I like openness and I like a universality universality universal I like <laughs> I like it that a song can inhabit all kinds of moments not just the literal love song or the hate song or the sex song or whatever it's good that's you know the better the song is that why you didn't print the lyrics on, on, on the record sleeve? Yes. Yeah, that is. I also, yeah, I mean, I, I also find myself, when I, when I have a, an album with lyrics in it, I find myself, you know, telegraphing the song before it happens, and I don't let it happen to me because I'm so interested in the lyrics. And besides, I mean, if you saw my lyrics in print, it, they don't really look all that impressive. <laughs> So it's a combination of, of uh, sound and texture. And, uh, no, it's, it's all insecurity. It's insecurity. Like, yes, mm. but I like. But I like. But but also, I like, I like having a bit of mystery about the music. You know, that you take it for yourself or or, or push it away. But but do you feel insecure still? Oh yeah, find me a cure, baby. I'll take it. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm I'm not. Uh, this whole thing has just started, and I uh, don't even—I don't even know what my uh, what my process is. You know, my creative process. I—I I, I, have—I have to—I uh, have to go away for a while. I think. Has it become too much, or the attention? Um. No. I mean, too too much to bear. No, no, not at all. It's it's uh, it's overwhelming, that's for sure. But it's all right, you know. It's good. But you say that you need to go away for a while. Is that because you need to f to to? F I need to put some life into these ideas I have and make lots more music. 
I just need to. <laughs> I just need to get away, and I will. But, but that sounds. It sounds when you say these these things that it's like a uh, music to you has a sort of a ther therapeutic uh, aspect also for you. Well, a any expression, any emotional expression is therapeutic. But I don't go to it for therapy. It mm. just. It's just, it just, it sort of is a, therapy is sort of like a byproduct to it, and that's great. But the the purpose of it is just to do it. It's just to have it real. I just love music. I like it a lot. I told you about these letters that that young kids, especially girls, are sending for this program. I, I also know that a, a, a lot of girls, not not only the young ones, but a lot of girls are attracted to you. Can, Is that? Can you cope with that? Um, yes, because uh, I know. <sighs> I know that it's not me that they see. It can't be me. They don't quite really know who I am. They can't know from seeing me 50 minutes on a stage or on the television or. They can know the music for themselves, but uh, uh, and 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 usually, uh, usually they just want things signed, or they want mementos, or they want they just want they want something from me. They, there hasn't been any real love interest for groupie, groupies. It's just not possible unless they. I don't know. I have a I have a real. I, I mean, this is my work. And and it, it, you know what I mean? It's it, it, it's it, the 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 relationship is set up that that they receive and and we uh, transmit. And any relationship after that is going to be colored by that transaction, instead of you know instead of like you know me meeting somebody just um you know them not knowing who I am and taking me for what I am and. It's not a defense. It's just it's just something I know is true. Um, and I've you know I've had rock crushes. I had a crush on Kim Deal. She was with the Pixies, and but that didn't it didn't mean I was going to go up and say, can I please make love with you? I love your album. You know. But it was a com also a combination with the, in combination with the music and then and the, the feeling of the music that you were attracted to. Well, girls are pretty smart about music. Every cool thing I've ever gotten into is because of a girl. Smiths, Susie and the Banshees, Bad Brains. They're, they're pretty smart. Because they... Uh, or they're not... They're not smart, they're just... They're just, they're just uh, and this is a gross generalization of girls, as opposed to boys. But, uh, but mostly it's true, it's a good cliche, because a girl will have in her record collection uh, any number of disparate things that just make them feel something you know like a soundtrack from a movie and then some really like dopey British pop band or some really stupid American metal and or something really lofty and poetic and, and then, a, then a symphony and then and then guys will like if they like Metallica they will only like have Metallica and then well maybe a little Slayer and like one color Yeah, they're more single-minded, you say. Yeah, because I don't know. It's just either they need to, they, they feel like belonging to something, or they guys get very, very focused <clears throat> and uh, and think that straying from the path will weaken them. Whereas girls are, uh, if you're vulnerable by nature, then you can never be that weak. It's it's impossible to sway you. You're just swayed. <laughs> But will you say that you also have this collector's gene in your body? You know, that's typical for boys. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, the, 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 the coveting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, sure I do. But I also have... I'm practically a girl. I'm, I know, I'm 70% water. And 50% of that is, is girl water. <laughs> and it used to... It used to really... Uh, be a detriment a long time ago and now I'm, I don't care anymore but uh uh ba 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 ba
I don't know, there's just, just scads and scads and scads of music out there, amazing things that will give you inspiration, really strange things, uh, that you need to be open enough to find them. You need, you know, and, and you just can't be close-minded about it. But talking about this, uh, girls uh, being uh, attracted and, and stuff, I think some of the things that attract girls towards your music has to do with the, the think that your voice is so delicate that it can break down any moment. Well, I've been touring for two, like two years practically, and hasn't fallen down yet. Falls down once in a while, but oh, because of because of the, because of. Uh, no, no, because no, because of... Uh, because my voice is girlish? No, no, but there's something <laughs> delicate in it. I, I know my, old, my oh, own yeah. girlfriend, she's very attracted to the way that you sing because oh. he thinks it's so delicate, the way you go up in the, in, in the high octaves. Oh. And yeah. like, like it can break down any moment, but it doesn't. It's just... Oh, you thank know. you. Mm. Thank you. But uh, that's, just, that's just my taste. I, you know, I, I scream my head off as well. I like, well, the thing about the voice is that, as opposed to other instruments, it's completely exposing. You know, it's, it's it, every emotion you have, it, it, it's, it's the first thing you use when you're a child, you know. And it's the most, every devastating thing that's ever happened to people, as a, you know, like, with the exception of maybe guns and bombs and weapons. It's usually happened with the voice, you know. I hate you. Go away. Fuck you. People use that. I love you. Things like that. And uh, and I I just I think that every emotion has a, a sound, a musical sound, a musical setting, and a and a lyric, but but also a feeling. And and, and I, I I like I like having I don't know. I like having filigree and I like having total penetrating sound and I like it all. I don't know if that answers your question. We talked about ten, ten minutes ago. We we talked about you know uh, the, the older audience, the older people in the audience. But tonight, to, today you will be playing at this festival, and I think a lot of the pe people out there are quite young. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. It would be quite a different experience for you. Is that something you you look forward to? Um. It's a different experience for me than the last time I came to Denmark, but um, throughout all the shows, uh, there have been people around my age or younger. But you prefer and, the younger audience? Or? No, I prefer, I prefer it to be all kinds of people. Like we played in Antwerp and there were people of all ages. People of all ages come to our shows and all kinds of people. Um, and uh, that I like. I really enjoy it because, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll be old. Someday I am old now. Are you 29 or? No, no, 28. 28. But ever since I was 13, I felt like a like a fuddy duddy. You did? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, uh, Henry Miller said that he was feeling old all his youth, and when he became, you know, about 50. He became younger. Yeah, he became younger. So. Yeah, that's uh, it's only because I, uh, you know, I was a very I, I just worried too much as a kid. I still do. I'm not talking about age and inexperience, but age and just, uh, just, I don't know, worry. <laughs> It'll make you old before your time, so stop worrying. But has that got something to do with having an, an unsettled childhood? Or? It has a lot to do with everything I've gone through. And just, I don't know, I'm just a big, uh, I'm just a, I'm just a sponge for tragedy. <laughs> Even if nothing's happening, I'll you know, I, I I used to be able to just put myself in a in a in a woeful state, just uh, like some people cry just to to uh, indulge themselves. But that that wears on you, wears on your uh, energy, and it keeps you away from reality, just like being happy all the time. But uh, I don't know. I think a lot. I th you can you can hear me thinking right now if you listen close enough. Yeah. So you are sort of the world ver very type. Or? What world weary? Yeah, yeah. Uh, more people weary than world weary, but uh, mm, I'm not cynical. I'm or I'm not a 
a, a solid cynic. I'm a healthy cynic. But I'm I'm way too romantic. I'm way too. Please stop me before I speak anymore. <laughs> but but things must change. I mean, you are on tour. You don't have the time to sit and think all the time. Well, I, I stand and think all the time, or I go to the bathroom and think, or I think, 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 think. It's so you even think on stage, maybe? No, I can't. Mm. I only act. It's the, that's the one place in my life right now that uh, is the place where I live totally in the present. Which is why it's so intoxicating, you know, because you never get a chance to do that unless you're making love or, or in a fight or something. You don't think about yesterday or tomorrow or anything. Now is the time, and it's it's a cross between, uh, you know, it's like a survival, but a survival to have, you know, your accurate emotions made real, and that's that's such a I, I couldn't even put my finger on it what it feels like. It's just it just you feel real. And still, you feel a, bre a need to to break up and have a few months off, and uh -huh. yeah. yeah, because I want to be closer to yourself. And well, and also to create more fuel for that stage experience, and, and to to you know, I don't know, just get deeper into music. Have you been traveling all all, yes. all year since the LP came out? Yes, you have been, yeah, and before, mm. before the LP came out, and before that, I I've, I've been touring since the top of '94. The very, very, no, the winter of 93, I've been touring on my own. And then in June, I think, or May or something, uh, uh, I went out with the band. And we've been on the road ever since with little, with little stops here and there. Two weeks here, three weeks there. Mm. Hasn't been enough. Every time I come home, I'm always working. And I'd like to not work for a yeah, while. So we haven't been in New York for quite a while now. Um, I haven't been myself in New York in quite a while. You know, meanwhile, my ordinary life is totally crumbling and falling away, and ah, uh, it's frustrating. It is frustrating. But uh, the light side to that is that this experience is really great. It's beautiful. There's always a future. I'll, 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 I'll take care of it later. But then you must also uh, be being on tour for, for all this time and not being home where your where your heart is. Maybe you you. You, you must become very close to the band and you must be like... Sure I do. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, sort of I, a little family. Or? Yeah, I, I didn't think that uh, so late in my life I'd have best friends, like new best friends again. I just thought that was something that happened to you when you were a kid, but I do. It's great. We're, we're forced... Uh, be, because of the... Because you you don't have any time to really act falsely like you do in your home, meaning like just relax and fool around. There's no fooling around out here. You have to if there's a problem, you have to address it. You have to be honest. If there's something great, you must let them know. Other people around you, and uh, and that's a real that's a real caustic thing. It can burn you to to be so honest all the time. But we've come through it nicely, and you have to be really supple. And they're great men they're really good men i like them and they're great fucking musicians i just looked at this piece of paper up and it says that you have to depart as soon as possible so yes. it's a usual situation mm, you, you yes. don't have the time to be here and look uh -uh. around and see you know uh, get the atmosphere of, of the place and stuff no mm. i still have not seen denmark you know the last time around it was the same you had to leave directly after the show or No, no, we had a day, uh, I think. Oh, wait, did we? I don't remember. At one point, well, mostly I was in my hotel with a B-12 shot in my butt and uh, waiting to, to heal in my throat in a hotel room. But before that, I think we were running around in Christiana and uh, the town that Hash built. And uh, just, I don't know, trying to soak up the atmosphere. So that was good. But from time to time, we get like an, uh, an extra day go find some place to eat. Can you remember where you're going next? Where are we going next? Belgium. Yeah, Belgium. The answer is no, I don't remember. No. Yeah, Torhau. The Meltdown Festival. Factor. He's the one who's... He's my brain. Remembering, he's your brain. Gene Bowen. 
Oh, you're going to Belgium. Then it should be, a, you know the film? If it's Tuesday, it must be Belgium. No. That's about an American, just like you actually. In other circumstances, but he's uh, traveling, uh, you know, for Europeans, the typical American way, uh, one country per day in Europe. Oh my God. And uh, he don't know where he is, and then he looks at the, you know, his ca his uh, timetable, time plan, yeah. and he sees Tuesday. Well, it must It'd be Belgium. Belgium. <laughs> Morons. Yeah. I find a, I find a lot of that. The, um, lesser in, in places like Denmark and, and uh, Bavaria. But in in the very popular places, meaning like places that are popular to Americans to go vacation, there's a huge contingent of, of Europeans that just l look at all Americans as complete buffoons. And I have to tell them that, uh, yeah, mostly I agree. I mean, there are buffoons that, that go as tourists in New York. But uh, it's too bad because <laughs> it's very embarrassing, you know, to like go looking for something in, in Germany and just everybody going, no, I'm afraid not. And then look at their friend like, fucking Yankee bastard. Ah. No, I'm afraid we have nothing. No, no, no. No, just, just, can you tell me where I can find some, no, no. Mickey had a, an experience like that. It's funny. But, uh, I don't know. Good old prejudice. That's totally, uh, it's a, it's a worldwide language. I think that we should stop. Okay. Yeah. It was nice talking to you. Sure. Terrific.